All right, today we're going to look at I can understand multiplication as scaling. So first let's go ahead and identify what the word scaling means for math. So scaling is changing the size of a quantity. So it's pretty straightforward. We're looking at three different groups when we look at scaling. So when you change the size of a quantity, you're either going to shrink it or you're going to stretch it. So when you shrink something, you decrease it. When you stretch something, you increase it. And if it stays the same, it stays the same. So let's make a little chart. And let's just look at numbers and fractions that are less than a whole, equal to a whole, and greater than a whole. And this will relate to scaling. We'll look at it in just a second. So some random fractions less than a whole, let's say one half, two thirds, and four fifths. They're proper fractions. All the numerators are less than the denominators. They're all less than a whole. Equal to a whole. We'll do one whole. Um, 2 over 2. Let's do 10 over 10. And a really wild one. Let's do 1,234 over 1,234. Yet all these are still equal to one whole. Our last one greater than a whole. We can say 5 over 4. 7 over 2. And let's do 8 over 3. They're all fractions. They're improper fractions, though, so they're greater than a whole. Now, the reason we wrote these down was to look at if I were to multiply a factor, let's pick, um, let's use a fraction. So let's use the fraction 1 half. If I look at the fraction 1 half and I want to change the size of the quantity of 1 half, and let's say I want to decrease the size, I want to shrink it, I would need to multiply by a factor that's less than a whole. If you multiply a factor that's less than a whole, your answer is going to be less than the original factor. So let's choose 1 half times 1 half. My answer is 1 fourth, and 1 fourth is less than a half. This factor allowed me to decrease, shrink this fraction so one half is less than a whole, therefore it shrunk. One half times one half equals one fourth. Let's look at the middle one, equal to. Same fraction, one half. This time I'm gonna multiply it by any one of these. Let's do 10 over 10. 10 over 10 is also equal to one whole. So one half times 10 over 10, 10 over 20, which is equal to 1 half, right? 1 half is equal to 1 half. It stays the same. It doesn't scale. It stays the same. So if you multiply any fraction or any number, any quantity, by something that's equal to a whole, it's going to equal the same fraction that you started with, the same number you started with. The last one, let's look at greater than. So I have 1 half and I multiply that by any number or any fraction greater than a whole. Let's use the first one, 5 fourths. 1 half is less than 5 eighths. 5 eighths is greater than a half because I'm multiplying by something that's greater than, I should have colored these in. Because I'm multiplying by something that's greater than a whole, I am going to increase the product from the original or the first factor. So to recap real quick, understanding multiplication as scaling, all three of these examples I multiplied. If you have any fraction, any whole number, and you want to change it, and when you change it, you think, do I want to decrease it? Do I want to have it stay the same? Or do I want to increase it? Shrinking or stretching, 
you have to look at its factor. If the factor is less than a whole, it's going to decrease from the original. If it's equal to a whole, it's going to stay the same, right? A half is a half. And if it's greater than a whole, 5 fourths is greater than a whole, the half is going to increase in size. 5 eighths is greater than a half. And that's all for I can understand multiplication as scaling.